Okay. Uh, you got your list and everything? I want to tell you about a story about one of the traffickers um, that found this lady, and she was, he had got her hooked on drugs. And she sold him her two-month-old baby, two-year-old baby, so she could have drugs. That baby went into trafficking, y'all. These people are sick people that uh, these traffickers get these victims. They're sick people. They don't care. There's a girl, uh, A21, uh, care, um, Keynes uh, started the organization, A21, was in the airport and seeing all the pictures of the uh, missing kids, and that what, that's what got her started. But uh, one little girl that she rescued, she was nine years old, going through 40 rooms a night of men until she was 15 years old. And when she found her, she said, how did you survive? She says, you get to the point you just don't even know what you're doing. Because I knew if I didn't do good, I'd starve or they'd beat me. But she said, you get to the point you just don't even know what you're doing anymore. So y'all, this is sick. Our country is in a bad way. Charlotte, North Carolina to Charleston is one of the heaviest traffic areas in the United States. Because you're straight from Charlotte International City all the way to the coast. I don't know if you remember a couple years ago, this one little girl got, they caught her. And she, I don't know what happened, but she got to something on Facebook, got hold of the guy's phone or something. He fell asleep or something and got on Facebook book and they was putting her on a container with other girls to ship them off. And they caught her just in time. Twenty some girls fixing to be shipped off, y'all. Kids, nine years old and above. Oh, them nine-year-olds bring top dollar. The younger dollar, the more they'll pay for them. No kid is safe. No girl, no boy is safe anymore. You know, uh, going to the grocery store. You've got children. There are people not, oh, can I help you? I think it was Gina was talking about somebody that offered to help her with her kids. Oh, yeah, they're watching you. They love to have that little girl, that little boy. So those things you got to be aware. Like I said, every 30 seconds somebody goes in traffic somewhere in this world. And I got only papers, you got apps. Y'all, these apps are stuff you need to watch. It's okay to trust your children, but you need to hold them accountable. You need to check them phones. And they hide things, let me tell you, they can hide them. And you need to know the passwords. Because let me tell you, Back in the pictures on the apps, on pictures, they hide things on those pictures apps. they got to have a password to get in. And if you don't know how to hit that, you ain't going to be able to get in it. In the settings, they hide things now, too. And when you hit that setting, sometimes you have to hit it twice. And sometimes it'll come up and need a password. The FBI says you need to know your children's passwords because within the first 24 hours, they might get to find them. After that, they wouldn't be able to. But you know what? Majority of parents do not know their children's passwords. They never check their phones. That's a shame that us as a parents are falling short like that. You know, we need to watch our children. Don't trust anything or anybody because this world's a mess. People can say they're Christian or people can say they're this, that, and other, but they're not. So you have to be aware. So those apps are some of the apps that these kids get that traffickers use to get in with these kids. And see, these kids think it's something just, you know, just talking to somebody. Well, it's not. They get on the Internet. Do you know what your kids are doing on the Internet? Do you know what they're looking at? In your package, you've got uh, some things you need to check on. It's talking about uh, checking your password, block apps, check the browsing history. Talk to your children. Uh, and it also says on the application to protect monitors, Bark, Teen Save, Net Nanny. All these things you need to watch. These are things that people, these traffickers use to get into your children's phones and their internet. Keep your eyes on their phones, their internet. Block them where they can't do these things. And y'all, if they want a computer, they can find it. So you need to tell them of these things. It's up to you to warn your children. God give you those children or those grandchildren, and it's up to you to warn them. 
All these here drugs that's going through school, where do you think they come from? Traffickers. These kids put uh, marijuana oil on uh, gummy bears and stuff to get these kids hooked. I told my grandchildren, don't take anything from nobody. I mean, that's how easy they're getting in there. You'd be surprised at the little things like that. Kids don't think about that. Hey, if I had a friend, she wants to give me some gummy bears. Oh, yeah. Well, you have to warn your children about that. Like I said at Carowinds, don't take your children and drop them off at Carowinds. I mean, the mall, anywhere, because they're watching you. These people sit in front of Walmart and these malls, and they just watch. And if you sit back, you can see it. I know some little girls were walking through the mall one day, and I was out in the mall, and I thought, they was probably about 12, maybe. I didn't see a parent nowhere. And I, I seen this guy that got up from the seats over there and started, you know, and they was walking along, and I watched them. And I told that there's a black guy that's over security out there, and I know him very well. And I told him, I said, you need to watch those kids because that man's following them. He said, oh, I'll get that straight. But if you don't look, you don't see those things. What if you, uh, Charlotte, North Carolina, ranked seventh in the nation for trafficking? Seventh. South Carolina is 17. Y'all, that's bad. Know your children's friends. Do you know your children's friends? Do you know their families? I would never let my kids go to a world that I didn't know these people. And I mean, I truly knew them. Well, you better know them. I mean, you know, years ago, we didn't have to worry about that. But these people sitting beside you, you don't even know your neighbors anymore. I remember years ago, we lived in a house, and all of a sudden, I seen the cops coming down the road, and the man down there's son had friends over, and he'd been molesting his friends. And I'm thinking, I would have never thought of nothing like that. So always know what your kids are doing. Ask them questions. Check up on them. It don't hurt to keep an eye check on them. In school, ask them about their friends. Ask them at the football games, what are you doing? Where are you at? Well, they these footballs, they love to get in these big events because they can slide them out and you never miss them until it's too late. Uh, because God holds us accountable for our children and our grandchildren. You know, the Bible says that he give, they give them to us, but it's our duty to take care of them. You know, uh, it says, brings, it says uh, the indicators that I give you was telling about ways that you can notice traffickers. <clears throat> it's talking about um, the company and who or her prefers and stuff like this. It's talking about where did they go, who did they talk to. Do these people seem like they're coached on what they say? Those pimps educate these girls. These girls or boys don't say nothing unless they tell them what to say. This is stuff you watch. If you have a kid come up to your house and they start talking or, you know, just acting funny, you can ask them some questions. And if you think they're trapping, call that number. You've got a paper with a number on there, too. New Creation, if it's something that you know it's trafficking, we'll come get them. You know, we have police officers come with us to go get these kids. You know, and that's what we're called to do. But uh, don't, don't be lack about anything when it comes to your children or grandchildren. You know, it says these people don't have freedom. And, you know, if they come around and they're kind of watching around just skittish all the time, just keep an eye on people like that because that, that's usually they're in trafficking. Um, Y'all, there's just so much I could tell you go on and on. Talking about these kids, how um, they're used in a little old room with just an old mattress thrown on the floor. They have to use the bathroom. They sleep there, and they send these men into these little old rooms that's no bigger than a closet. And they, and they feed them these drugs, and they feed them this stuff, tell them they're going to kill their families or whatever. They just brainwash them to the point they just walk and they don't even do it. You know, and a man in um, Greenville, I went to the national meeting in Columbia on trafficking. He says, you know, when I was a cop, I used to see these girls down in the corner. Didn't think much about it, but then it hit me. When he seen them, he'd look, and there'd always be somebody watching them. And when these girls are out trafficking and stuff like this, there's always somebody watching them. They know what they do all the time. They have so much control on them. And if you go in these hotels, you go down here at this old carriage place down here, 
and you look, you watch them bring these little girls in and, and then be there all day and how the men come in and out. It's happening right here, y'all. So be aware of what your children are doing, the apps, what they watch, and how they dress when they go out. You don't think about those things, but these traffickers watch these little girls. If they come out of these short shorts and all this makeup on and all this stuff like this, they look at those things. And you know what? Majority of kids that go out looking like that, the parents don't care. Because if they did, they wouldn't let their children do that to start with. But you see what I'm saying? All these things, that's what they're watching. So we need to be ready. We need to pray our children up. Lay our hands on them. But you know what? God, we can pray, but we still have to do our part. You know, and I, that's what just really irks me. Is this men out here on, and taking these girls and taking these boys, they don't care about nothing but their self or the money. Did you know it's a $150 billion uh, thing each year? They have four to six girls and uh, saying 150,000, uh, what, uh, every two weeks. Every week for those four to six girls. Man, they living in high, ain't they? But we're out here and have to work. But you see what I'm saying? And they don't pay taxes either. So you can look at that any way you want to. But I'm telling y'all, it's here in our city. And uh, it's in our state. It's in our country. I don't know uh, that uh, movie star, uh, Patrick Preacher, he's got the law passed about trafficking. And also, there's one in the house right now in the state of South Carolina that uh, I'm going to talk to Norman and to the governor about getting it passed here in Carolina, that um, it's not right. We're going to stop it. We're going to stop all this trafficking through our area. But what are you doing? Are you sitting by and just hearing what comes on the TV? Or are you doing something? Well, I'm telling you, God called us all to draw apart. If it isn't, do nothing but pray and warn people, our grandchildren, children in our neighborhood, or if you see children that's lost and don't have no way to go or their families don't care, watch out for those kids because somebody needs to watch after them. Well, y'all, we, um, we, like I told you, we have an organization, a new creation, and that's where it started. Leah and another, the lady, uh, Nancy, uh, does the Salvation Army done this because their hearts is that's what their hearts is about is helping people so i'm gonna let her come up and just tell you about some ways that you can help us we can't do it by ourselves we need help so she's gonna come up and tell you some things uh what you can do to help this trafficking in your area in your neighborhood or whatever okay and i appreciate all of you coming y'all just watch your children because if you're not watching them somebody else is I don't like being up, up there, so and I'm a walker, so I'm just going to talk to you from here. My name is Leah Clevenger, and I'm the co-founder of New Creation. And Janet spoke a bit about um, why we're here. And Nancy and I come together through a different leadership group, and uh, we went our separate ways. And God really laid it on both our hearts while we were together in a um, leadership um, organization that human trafficking was a problem in York County and our surrounding areas. We come up with a project to do and through law enforcement and other things people said we have no known documentation that human trafficking has happened in our area. Okay. We come to find out that that's due to documentation. So Janet spoke a little bit about how we are falling as a community and as government on how we document stuff. Not that our government's not doing their part, they definitely are. But we miss because we're a small, small town still, right? We right beside Charlotte. Um, we miss those key points and making sure that we document things properly. Janet and I and our team with a new creation is working closely to make a difference in the counties to make sure that we are documenting properly, we are able to get these victims help. One thing I want to talk about that we talked a lot about kids, but we have all ranges of um, ages in here. Young ladies and young men, if you're on dating websites, I just met someone whose um, cousin was a victim of something that is still under investigation, so I have to be um, cautious about what I share. But he, he, he 
was on a dating website, met a young lady, went out on a couple of dates, really liked her, thought she was a good person. It come to find out she introduced him to someone. They wanted him to partake, him to partake in some um, situations that he didn't want to be a part of. He, they took him that night when he said he didn't want to be a part of it. They took him and tried to kill him and left him for dead on a dirt road. That's hard to think that someone in there, I would say he was finishing up college, um, was taken possibly to be trafficked. I'm not saying that that was the case, but what they were sharing um, with him and wanted him to do, that's, that's heart-wrenching to me. No matter whether you're male or female, you stand a chance of being victimized of human trafficking. Um, I want to share one story because Janet did a really good job about what human trafficking looks like for our teenagers. This is one case where a child was sent home every night after being trafficked. And this was out of um, Texas. And I'm sorry, I have a bunch of stories that I share when I'm speaking to groups. But this one really hits home for me as I have an 11-year-old stepdaughter, soon to be stepdaughter. And we're busy parents, right? We work. We have other children that we take care of. So this child played basketball out of Texas. The um, perpetrator, what I call pimp for lack of better words, would come in because ball games are open to the public, right? We don't do anything to screen who comes in to watch our children play games. This guy come in each game and paid attention to these girls playing basketball and realized that this young girl's parents were not able to be at every ball game. He befriended her. They made quote unquote friends and she fell in love. He took her to get her nails done. He bought her a separate cell phone. Parents, just because you pay for a cell phone doesn't mean that they will not purchase them a cell phone because they will do whatever they can to divide you from them. Bought her a cell phone. She was the cool girl. She was a senior. She had an older boyfriend who would come pick her up from school. Her dad was an attorney. Her mom was a stay-at-home mom with younger children. As she started dating this young gentleman, not gentleman, this young fella, he took her and would sell her every night or every afternoon at the hotel to people in the community. You know why she didn't tell? Just give me one. No. He said, if you tell anybody, your parents will not love you anymore and I will steal your sister and do the same thing to her. I have a younger sister. I can promise you I would not have said a word to protect my younger sister. That's just a hint of the brainwashing that we have been able to meet people in this industry who have been saved. That, is, that comes nowhere close to the amount of damage that a pimp will do to your, your loved ones to brainwash them into staying into this lifestyle. The only way that she was safe from this, because um, Janet talked about, they move them often. That's why it's very hard to locate someone who's being trafficked, because they're always on the go, because they have to. Our law enforcement, they're very knowledgeable on what's going on. They're working hard to recover these children, but they move them state to state and matter and they will they will split up the circuit to go different places they have women the top um, ladies that um, that work for them they will drive these ladies back and forth or boys back and forth to keep them from being found they took this young girl to Florida and that's where she was found and recovered and was able to go back home her dad was an attorney. Her mom was a stay-at-home mom. They were your perfect, like, leave it to be her family, right? That was very eye-opening to me because 
I am a daughter of a former law enforcement officer. We had a very leave it beaver family. A new creation was brought by nothing less than God. Nancy and I really tried to fight God's calling to us. We actually went on a training for human trafficking in Atlanta just to say, okay, God, I hear you calling, but is this really what I can do? Because I, I work for like an eight-to-five job. She works for Salvation Army. We have families. This really is not in my schedule to do. Or well, that's what I was telling God. He has opened up so many doors for us. One, in 2018, our number one goal is to raise awareness in York County and our surrounding areas. Because if we raise awareness and educate our communities, we may never have a victim. And we've done our job. Sorry, my voice is shaking because I'm very passionate about this. We do have goals right now. We currently do not have a home. But when God says that it's time for us to have a home, we have people in place who will be willing to step in and take care of those that enter into our home. If we get a call tonight, though, we have a place to take them. We cannot tell you where it is because it is a safe house. We have currently, we're on call 24-7, Nancy and I. We have a task force. We also have a board. Um, uh, Janet is on our task force. If you could be in prayer for us, as God opens up doors for us to raise awareness to the community, we also have a need for bulletproof vests because we are in situations at times where we need to protect ourselves. I said I was former law enforcement um, daughter. I also have a brother who is in law enforcement. I almost did not do God's calling because of how it has affected at the time my relationship with my family because my brother knows what that life is like. He did not want me going into this and listening to the calling that God had laid on our hearts because it is dangerous. It is hard. Um, we've done our own research. We've sat outside of hotels. We do see it happening. And I have had one young lady. Well, she was an older lady. She was actually ex-law enforcement, stand up in a group and say to me in a church setting, um... You do realize that not every person that sells themselves for sex is being trafficked. Yes, I do realize that. There are those ladies and men who are prostitutes on their own free will. And if that's what they choose to do, I will pray for them because that's not how God made our bodies to be. But for those that are caught and can't get out, we pray that a new creation will be their light to set them free. As we have a safe house, it goes further than that because uh, Janet talked about how much money these girls are used to making, right? That's a lot of money. Even though they don't get to put it in their pocket, it's still in their mind their money. They never see it again. They get their hair done. They get their nails done. He takes some shopping on occasion. One story when I heard a victim talk, she had been rescued, but she shared that she, at the age of 22, lived for Saturdays to lay on the couch, eat cereal, and watch cartoons with her daddy. I can't imagine that life. I would work for you, and I live for Saturdays. And when I use the word daddy, it's not her real daddy. It's the man that she worked for. Another one that really hits close to home. The little girl, this is a girl out of New York City. It's actually from a documentary that we shared when we were doing some training at the house. If you have a chance, it's on Amazon. It's called Girls Like Us from Rachel Lloyd. The young girl was at a conference when we heard this story, but then I watched Girls Like Us. She was from New York City, 
Her mom was a single mom had in hard times. She had multiple children. She got involved in human trafficking. She escaped, went back home. Her mom said, you're not welcome here. You chose that life. Get out. I cannot imagine that. I do not have kids of my own. But no matter if they're mine or not, they won't have to go back on the street. Sorry. Like I said, I'm fortunate. I come from the Leave it to Beaver family, but some kids do not. That's what a new creation is here for. We ask that you pray for God to open up those doors if it's his will. We also ask that you continue to ask him to show us the way so that a new creation can have that home. And also for the second phase, we want to have a place, smaller homes, for them to live in so that they can get their children back. They can go back to school. They can learn how to hold a job. They can learn how to cook, clean. Ladies, you know what all that stuff's like, right? It's hard. It's hard work. We're fortunate we had someone to show us how to do it. These girls went and had to work. They don't understand the, the, the cost of working for $10 an hour, coming home, paying bills. Oh, I got to go to the grocery store. They've probably never had their kids. We want to help them accomplish all of that so that we can set them back into society and be successful and not have to return to that life. That's a new creation's number one goal, is that we are successful in returning these women and possible children back into, unfortunately, society where it's not nice to us. We as adults know that, right? But the mentality of a woman who is caught in sex trafficking is at the age that the trauma starts. So if they, and the average age is 11 years old, and that goes for the boys too. In California, you can order the boys online to come to your house anywhere in the United States. They will fly them to you. So your boys are not safe either. We want to be able to teach them that there is life outside of this, but we also have to work with their mental health, their spiritual health, health, and their physical health. I will be available for questions afterwards. I know I have to be conscious of your time. I thank you all for the time that you have given Janet and us, and Steve's going to come close us out. Uh, I wasn't going to do this, and Janet has no idea that I'm going to do this. Uh, but God's convicted me about this, and so i got to say it. I'm going to use one of Jesse's lines. It's time to get real. How many of you thought when Janet was talking about the cell phones, oh, I'm not going to do that. I ain't hacking my kid off. Who runs the house? Is it the parent? Or is it the kid? Let's get real. Is it the parent? Or is it the kid? Would you rather hurt your kid's feelings and have them mad at you and have them at home? Is it worth the fight? I had someone to say, if you, buy, if you pay for that phone for your kid and if they won't give it to you, you have every right to take it from them. They don't have a lead to stand on. Care whether it makes them mad or not. Cell phones are good if they're used properly. Find your kids' phones. Find their passwords. You, 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 you take care of your kids. Because if you don't, somebody's waiting to do that for you. Okay? Get real with your kids. Show your kids that you love them. You love them enough to make them mad. You love them enough to keep them alive. Okay? Uh, one, more, one more little quick little story. Uh, this one Janet told me, but it just blew me away. 
man or woman had a, little, had, a, had a daughter. I think Janet said she was 12 or 13 years old. The wife worked third shift. The husband trafficked their, her, their own child at night while her wife was at work for the money. For the money. It is a serious issue. It is something as a church we need to be focused on and we need, we, we need to be in the forefront of making sure that we do our part. I told Janet we were um, uh, sitting at, uh, coming on the way home from church today, and God laid this on my heart. Now, I'm going to shut up, and you can close, okay? Uh, I don't know how many churches are here tonight, two, three, four, don't know. But let's look at the spiritual side of this real quick. When we come to the church... What are we looking for? We're looking for a Savior. We're looking for a Savior. These kids are looking for a Savior. Will you be theirs? If you see something, even if you don't, if you're not sure, call that number. Call that number, even if you have doubts. Because these kids are looking for a Savior. Let it be you, okay? Thank you. I've been trafficking until I got exposed.